thought I'd come to you with hopefully a quick and not so traditional project, but um, you'll see probably next week a video where I did handrails um, that uh, were the, uh, tree, tree, this just look like a branches. And the, I have a couple pieces of scrap left over from that, and I'm thinking that would make an awesome door pole. So I think what I'm going to do is turn these two pieces of scrap into door poles. I got a couple other pieces here, but I got to make two more of them for the standoffs. Uh, it's just going to be a quick and dirty. I'll put a plate behind it, put some tree bark on the plate. Quick and dirty, um, just going to weld everything together uh, just to utilize these pieces and the time that I put into them. The first thing, if you notice, this one here is flared on the top and not the, not so much the bottom. The first thing I want to do is uh, I'll cut these to the, to the same size and then I'll flare these ends off. I like that look a little bit and then I need to make up uh, a couple of um, standoffs that are the same size so they can go ahead and, and uh, finish this piece up. So that's what we're going to do today. Stay tuned. Upset these too much, it's just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of a flare, just a little character, just like that. I like it. Flip around to the other side, actually, I'll cool this side down so we're not upsetting that anymore. Just stick that one in. Let's see if this next one's ready, it's ready enough. See now this one has a bit of a curve in it, and I want to do that on the other, on the other one too. I like that that look. But we'll get these ends done first. I'll be back when that's done. Put a little bit of a curve into that one that was relatively straight. It's a little bit warm. I'm gonna cool that down. I want the curve towards the middle, maybe a little offset, but yeah, just a little. I think that looks good. How hot are you? You're not too hot. Just to kind of, not match, but just to kind of go along with that, just so it isn't perfectly straight. So I'm happy with that. That part's done. Next thing I need to do is, uh, I'm a little short on textured pieces for the risers, so I need to uh, throw some texture into some three-quarter round, which we're almost ready to do here your bolt pieces, the handrail, you know, the large one inch diameter stuff, as well as these limb size pieces. This is basically the technique that I use. Back side of the two pound cross beam hammer, trying to create some type of large two mil pattern, but still at the same time relatively random. It works really well. And then if you switch it up a little with a couple of different hammers, the three pounder and maybe the ball peen, it allows you to throw some more realistic textures in. For me, it's quick and it's, well, it's not quick, but it's easier and it just gives you a really nice wood grain pattern. So I need about six inches. I already have two pieces that I can use, so I need two more. So. So, so that's just the two pound and it looks great. But like I said, if you go back, maybe throw up uh, just a couple of dimples in there. Nobody's going to really see these risers, but just to give you an example, a couple little dimples just give it a little bit more character. Looks cool. That's it. That's all we got to do there. For my back plates, I have looks like 3 16 by 2, 2 and a half, I would say. Uh, cut these off. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, bevel the edges and then I'm going to put a, a tree uh, bark texture on the inside of those. I'll show you one of those. All right, for these mounting plates, again the two, pin, two pound hammer, just going to put in my longitudinal tree bark lines. Just for some texture. edges because I want to put uh, a bevel book on the edge. And that's probably all I need. Like I said, I can come in and 
pounder and just throw a little bit of different texture in there in a couple of spots. Just to mess things up. Come in with a ball peen or some other thing and just put just a little different. Like, hey, wait a minute. It's not just a single pattern kind of look. We'll heat it back up. I'll put the bevel in. We'll go around, turn it around and do the other side. Bevel in. the same amount on each side otherwise you can put a bit of a twist in it turn around and we'll flatten up what we got on that side just so she sits right Texture in, we'll put the bevels in now. To this side. That's good. We'll flatten her out again. Nice relaxing project. Relaxing project today. Let's hope everything goes all right. There's no reason why I wouldn't. Alrighty. So that's one done, and that gives you a really nice looking. Gotta make sure we don't have much of a twist to turn in it. Something tells me we do. Somewhere in here. I don't mind the corners coming in to dig in a little, but we can't have a twist or a turn. Looks good. Alright, there's the first one. I'll get the next one down. I'll come back. We should have all the pieces that we need. Uh, we'll get over to the bench and go into fabrication mode. Right, let's see what we can do about sticking these guys in here, and then I'll worry about shaping the top. Just give it a little tap. Hopefully we can just hold the stuff where I want it again, just to get started. Hopefully. Without too much distortion. Just to I think that'll work. Not the ugliest thing in the world. Alright, so that's okay. Again, I don't... Perpendicular and all that isn't extremely important because it's supposed to be tree branches, but what I do need to do now is I need to shape... What happened here? I need to shape those to fit the contour of this handle a little bit. So that's kind of why I just stuck them. So let me get this cleaned up and we'll work on that shape. So a little time with the angle grinder. And we got our contour close enough for welding, that's for sure. All right, so we'll go ahead and stick those babies on. And then do the other one. I'll be back when they're both done. We got them all glued together. Freaking awesome. Really, really nice looking set. I'm going to let these guys cool down. I'm going to go ahead and blacken them with some uh, cold blackening process. And, uh, and then I think we'll, uh, I think we'll clear coat it over that. Either that or poly. But we got to let them cool down for a minute. But those are some really nice looking pulls. Very, very happy with that. And again, the reason I did it is that I had some pieces left over. Normally, I'm moving on to the next project and it gets stored somewhere. Okay? It's 
Yeah, and so if you haven't noticed, I've been trying to clean the shop up. And it just gets stored somewhere, so I'm trying when I can, if I have the time to do it. Hey, can we make something out of it? Let's get it made. Let's get it on the shelf so we can get it sold. So I'll be back once we start the blackening process. The blackening process that I'm going to use is this stuff called um, Presto Gel. Presto Black Gel. Uh, i got to get some dumping in there first. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't used this product that much to really know whether I like it a lot, but it does, when it works, it works. And it, uh, it's a, an oxidizing kind of thing, so it's, you have to neutralize it, or they tell you to neutralize it when it's done, but uh, we'll go ahead and just very liberally brush this stuff on. Don't really need it the back, the back, but we'll do it. On the edges, this stuff's very expensive, it's like, 150 or 60 dollars a gallon it's it goes a long way but it's not cheap in any way whatsoever i'll tell you that much but when it works it works really well i wish i knew what the chemical makeup was because i'm sure chandler could freaking come up with a formula that would do that but everybody's got to make a living you know just kind of crazy that it's a hundred and fifty forty dollars for a gallon of it that's for sure Keep the ends coated well we got a nice heavy coat on this and then we'll just let that sucker sit for a little while this one's still a little warm we'll slide that over and do this one as you can probably see already, it is changing the color. It's already darkening. It only takes like 10 minutes. And I will be back with you when I've let these guys soak long enough. Well, that's soaking. I'm just going to make up a very light baking soda rinse um, some people will say you don't need to rinse it in baking soda plain water will be fine but we'll just do just a light baking soda rinse so I don't have a lot of baking soda to wash up after and then we'll come back and wash this up we'll go ahead and just rinse this stuff off now it's probably been uh, six or seven minutes just gotta rinse it very well, that's all. Rinse it well, that's all. Just like that. Can't see what you can see. But you get a nice darkened black and steel. Without paint or without the beeswax. So now I, once this is dried, I can go help go over it with poly or uh, or clear coat. So you get it dried up, get it cleared up, and we'll be done. Use clear coat on these, along with that blackening agent. There you go. Nice set of door poles look like tree branches. And again, I had these branch pieces left over from the uh, the uh, handrail project that, I'm, that you'll see probably next week once we do the installation. But there you go. Not bad. A little, you know, it's kind of modern. You know, it's all welded, but everything was shaped and textured. Cool. By hand on the forge. Very cool looking. 
Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on another one.